On October 30, 1961, the Soviet Union conducted the most powerful nuclear detonation known to date in an unprecedented display of power. It was on that fateful day that a Soviet Tu-95 bomber embarked on a daring mission towards Novaya Zemlya, a cluster of islands that had witnessed numerous nuclear experiments. Yet, what was about to transpire surpassed anything that had come before. Attached to the underside of the plane was a thermonuclear bomb so large it wouldn't fit inside the interior bomb bay. The bomb was 26 feet long and weighed nearly 60,000 pounds. The bomb's official name was Isdelia 602, which translates to Item 602. However, its sheer might warranted a new moniker that persists even to this very day. The Tsar Bomba, the Emperor of Nuclear Bombs. By no means is the name an exaggeration. Undoubtedly, the Tsar Bomba is a fitting tribute to the awe-inspiring might it possesses. It yields 57 megatons of power, which is about 1,500 times the combined power of the atomic bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I mean, the bomb had to be released on a parachute in order to slow its descent and give the pilot time to escape. Prior to the test, the pilots were actually given a 50-50 chance of survival. Sounds like an Indiana Jones experience. The bomb detonated 13,000 feet over its target, and the blast obliterated everything within a 22-mile radius. It generated a mushroom cloud that towered at 200,000 feet. The impact was felt all over. An entire uninhabited Soviet town 34 miles away was leveled to the ground. More towns 100 miles away had all the wooden houses destroyed. Brick and stone structures were heavily damaged as well. In addition, it was estimated that heat from the blast would have caused third-degree burns up to a 62-mile distance. This unparalleled display of destructive force etched its name in history as the most powerful human-made explosion ever recorded, its blinding flash illuminating the skies from a distance of 620 miles. The creators of the bomb knew that the test was successful, because radio communications were downed for over an hour as a result of the blast. A Soviet cameraman fortunate enough to capture this awe-inspiring event described it with vivid and poetic imagery. He depicted the bomb's detonation as a fire-red ball of enormous size rose and grew. It grew larger and larger, and when it reached enormous size, it went up. Behind it, like a funnel, the whole earth seemed to be drawn in. The sight was fantastic, unreal, and the fireball looked like some other planet. It was an unearthly spectacle. One civilian witness recalled thinking that the earth had been killed. The flash alone lasted more than a minute, the expanding fireball expanded its radius to a staggering diameter of nearly six miles, engulfing an area large enough to encompass the entire urban core of cities such as Washington, San Francisco, or the entirety of Midtown and Downtown Manhattan. The blast was so powerful that its shockwave caused the release plane to immediately drop 3281 feet in altitude. Thankfully, the pilot regained control of the plane and brought it back to base in one piece. Remarkably, the bomb's potential for devastation was originally slated to be even more unfathomable. The initial proposal and design put forth by the Soviet Union envisioned a bomb of unprecedented scale, a colossal 100 megaton behemoth intended to send an unequivocal message to the world. It was to serve as a desperate, last-resort option capable of obliterating an entire metropolis in a single, devastating blow. The U.S. had many nearby bases to the Soviet Union and could potentially strike an escape within a short window. The Soviets did not enjoy the same luxury, with no nearby bases or means of rapidly attacking their opposites. Subsequently, the mentality behind the plan was very simple. If you can deliver only one or two bombs, they better be powerful. The Soviets got what they wished for and did possess the 100 megaton Tsar, but concerns began to emerge that prompted them to exercise caution with the weapon that was twice the size and power. They feared that the bomb was too powerful and dangerous to be tested, as it could have potentially covered the entirety of the northern Soviet Union with nuclear fallout. In addition, the bomb would have been too heavy to place in any plane and would have required crazy amounts of fuel to deliver it anywhere even if it was possible to load it. The detonation would have also been a one-way trip for any pilot. Not even Tom Cruise would have pulled it off. Ultimately, the power of the bomb was halved, 
and efforts were made to significantly reduce its radiation output. However, even in its modified form, this weapon remained the most formidable and potent in the long history of nuclear arsenals. Although the test was successful, the bomb posed a lot of different issues that made the Soviets as well as the rest of the world sway from it. First of all, the bomb could not be deployed by a ballistic missile. Instead, it had to be transported on a plane, therefore it could be intercepted way before it reaches its intended target, nullifying it as a major threat. Second of all, it was too powerful to control. You would not have been able to use it and harm not just one city, but one nation, without harming most of its surrounding nations as well. Let alone the radioactive hazard that would follow. For example, if you would hit Paris with the bomb, people would die in the UK, just so you could grasp the chaotic power of the Tsar. The Tsar Bomba stands as a potent symbol of the escalating nuclear tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War era. Its genesis and the aftermath of its testing serve as stark reminders of the geopolitical landscape that defined this tumultuous period. The pursuit and development of such a colossal weapon reflected the arms race and the relentless competition for dominance between the two superpowers. During that time, the United States attempted to downplay its concerns regarding the Tsar Bomba, asserting that the weapon was highly impractical and posed no significant threat. However, declassified files show that this was not the case. The Tsar had the Kennedy administration in a state of panic. They were running around in circles trying to emulate the weapon in fear of its tremendous power. But it wasn't just the United States who held worries regarding the Tsar. Everyone feared the bomb, even the Soviets themselves. Just two years after the Tsar Bomba's detonation, the United States and the Soviet Union, along with other countries, signed the Limited Test Ban Treaty, which prohibited atmospheric nuclear weapons testing. This agreement was a significant step towards mitigating the nuclear arms race and reducing the potential for catastrophic consequences. Compared to today's vast technological and nuclear advancements, the Tsar is still 40 times as powerful as the largest nuclear bomb in the U.S. arsenal today. The single test represents one-tenth of the total yield of all nuclear weapons ever tested by all nations. In the end, the Tsar Bomba was probably the reason why the nuclear arms race halted, potentially saving us all. One bomb to rule them all. What do you think of this bomb? Do you think we're ever going to witness something as powerful again? And finally, if you made it this far, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Leave a comment about what we should discuss next. See you in the next one.